it's like you gotta do the, the Second City, you gotta yeah. do the SNL, like, it's a very rigid sort of thing to success, but for you it's like going it all by yourself, like making your own path. Yeah, yeah. I, n I, never, uh, I never banked on, Adult Swim was Nick's thing, and Nick did all that work to like get us that show. Like, like the, negotiating the and stuff. And, stuff. Yeah. and that's why I'm like, every day I'm, you know, super thankful that Nick is not pissed at me for basically bombing, because he, he, he did all that, like, talking to executives, all that fucking bullshit. Um, but I knew from, from since, I, since I was like 22, since I, since I did the Million Dollar Extreme, the first one, which was my thesis project at RISD, I knew that like some semblance of success could be had by going an indie route. Um, and that's what I've always been uh, focused on. Mm -hmm. um, we did, me and Nick, we went to, um, we've always sort of dabbled and like tried to, you know, talk to celebrities on Facebook, try to like send our shit somehow to get Brad Pitt to see it or whatever. Like once in a while, like once a week, we'd be like, all right, let's send it to, we got to send a tape to Judd Apatow. Like that's the thing we would do. Um, but I knew, I knew that um, what, I, what I ultimately wanted to do would probably be too hot for TV, so to speak. Yeah, for, for people like us, it's like, you can't count on that stuff anymore. It's like when I'm like reading books and stuff and people are telling me like, you need to go to grad school. Yeah. You need to like- uh, That's loser shit. Yeah, and it's like, well, no one's gonna fucking read your dissertation. And like, I don't wanna do that. Like I wanna, like there's no path for what I'm doing. So I have to just get out there. And then like now, you know, I have the NYU professors <laughs> writing about me and you know, I'm here and they're like way down here. Yeah. Like no one fucking cares about them. They, you know, I won. Yeah, yeah man. That's um, that's like an insane thing to try to tell someone when you're, that, this is something I've talked about on Hide Wars when you have like ambition or you have like a, a path that you want to go down. Like telling someone that like, not only are you going to give the finger to the grad school, but like the fucking NYU professor is going to be obsessively like following your career like that's an insane if you're not there yet that's like insane trying to explain that to your mom or something yeah that's why I've, like, I've gotten in screaming matches with my, my, with my mom really so yeah like what is she she just, she just uh, like t telling my mom that like I'm gonna make money and be famous but and uh, it's not gonna I'm not gonna have a job I'm not gonna have insurance I'm not gonna have like I'm gonna go about it in a totally strange way that is dangerous personally and is uh, upsetting to everybody like my mom did not want to hear that which I understand I'm not I don't begrudge her for that feeling at all but it's like telling telling someone that when you're like 26 and you've got like a hundred dollars and you're a fucking loser is like a that's a bold statement you know what I mean yeah I mean I was telling my my parents about that when I had a blog and it's like 200 people read something I wrote and it was like well, people are like liking the stuff that I do and they're like, you're a fucking loser. Like, what are you fucking doing? That's what I'm getting right now. From, from your my, parents? Well, <laughs> from yeah. your uh, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. No, it, it, it's a... Uh, but like, nobody is going to... It's hard to understand, I guess. Well, I always take career advice from girlfriends. <laughs> no, I really, I, I have been trying to... I want to know your... Uh, would you... <laughs> well, I guess obviously not. You wouldn't... If a girlfriend asked you... I'd Stop. kick her in the face. I would do, no, I wouldn't even do that. What I would do is I would spend six to eight months getting the perfect, like this is what Joe Rogan does and this is something I would emulate. I would get I watch out for a form. kick? No, I'm not gonna hit anyone. <laughs> Front foot forward, okay. Weight, evenly balanced. And then you turn, okay, this is the important part because your hips are where it comes from, all right? You turn and then you look over your shoulder like this you have to see the target. You can't just do a fucking, you're not a mule, okay? And then you step into it and do like an athletic back kick or even one with a step, like try to bam, launch her into space. I would spend six months practicing and doing like leg workouts to kick my girlfriend in the chest if she ever tried to tell me what to do with my career. She gets like pissed off and stuff when I go over there. It's uh, yeah, it's a developing thing, uh, but. The Tech War Network is not my uh, my girlfriend's favorite favorite thing right now, but it's uh, it's all right. But don't listen, don't listen to that shit, Warren. 
She'll be smiling when you pay the bill, when you're paying the bills. <laughs> that pesto. <Yeah. laughs> These women, man, if you give them, they just kick them in the chest. That's the thing. I can't handle pass over the control of my creative ambitions to someone who just wants to squash it. You know, it's, it's not. She's, it's not a malicious thing. She doesn't want to like crush you. It's, uh, it's honestly probably just um, she wants to know that um, she's as important to you as yes. what you're, as the weird thing that you're doing. That Completely could ruin your career, and it's like. Um, the, the, the thing about that is once you give that to them, mm -hmm. they will start to not respect you because you're not being a man, you're weak, you're caving into her feminine demands uh, and you're not like you're not like fit to go out in the world and fight to like provide for you know her, right do what you need child. to do yeah so that's like women they always want more time they always want like um, more attention and it's like if you you give that to them, uh, and they start to, that's when they start to, you know, step all over you and treat you like cuck man. The, uh, the thing, one thing that someone said to me that stuck with me, it was actually, it was Ruse. Um, he said, uh, he'd never gotten female attention like he did when he was, um, uh, on Adderall. Like he was so like laser focused on what he was doing. Like not every, th every thought was about work. He wasn't thinking about pussy at all. Like he was, he was like work man, which he still is. He's like a very work focused guy, but um, that totally made sense and that stuck with me. The hundred K for sure, and then a week later, it's... we're we're a hundred percent gonna go on this project. Green light, go. Happening tomorrow. And then they don't answer. Show up the next day, they're like, "What? Sorry, 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 bro." We almost had a TV show. Really? It's like Sundance Channel. That's cool. And nothing, it just fucking went nowhere. The, the thing I wanted to say earlier, when we were talking about the grad school and the, my path here, the other thing about it, like, uh, it's kind of weird, but that is, those, those are not, you, those are things you don't, I'm not sure you want those anymore. Yeah. Um, Adult Swim for World Peace, we made, each of us made like 80,000 for like two years of work which is like, uh, that's, that's really bad money. Yeah. And like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like if I was making 80,000 every two years right now, I would be not, I'd be fucked. I, what, what the fuck? What the fuck are you gonna do with 80,000 in two years if you have any sort of expenses or, or trying to like buy a home or whatever? Um, and like people who've been, people whose name that you've known for like 10 years and who, who fa whose faces are everywhere, like the maximum level of success, like fucking uh, Tim Heidecker or whatever, like um, they have like, what, what's Tim Heidecker's net worth? I don't know, but it's like, it's, it's not 20 million. Mm. So it's like, even if you got stratospheric, like complete niche market penetration, you saturated like what you could saturate, you got every possible fan, you made all the money, um, you know, they don't they don't have that much money. No one no one at Adult Swim is getting paid three hundred and fifty thousand an episode. Like it's just not a that's not a real thing. Do you think the legacy stage of media, do you think the pillars of that are it's it's, it's already it's already broke it's like and Joe Rogan, I'm I'm like I'm stupefied right now. I sound retarded because I'm because this whole the whole time that I'm sitting here like talking about this, I'm thinking about how much money Joe Rogan probably makes. Like fucking Cumtown makes forty thousand a month. Joe Rogan's probably Joe Rogan probably makes he has to make over a million dollars a month. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, it, how much does how much does Tim Ferriss make? Like I don't. And these and these are all people like I'm. To say that I'm not I'm not saying like oh I'm gonna be like Joe Rogan one day I'm gonna have that I'm gonna have that spot man. If that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the like the paradigm has shifted twenty seventy style. Like you can make fuck you can make serious money doing an indie thing. Exactly. Like yeah. Real. Yeah. Do you worry about like the long term of like what what is Sam Hyde gonna do like forty years from now? No. No. I'm I'm gonna be ceaselessly pursuing uh, whatever it is that I'm working on. I have no doubt about that. I'll pro I, I'll think I'll peak when I'm eighty years old. I have no the pleasure that working on this shit brings me is the only thing that is fun is like the the main the main thing in my life is that I really enjoy working I posted a thing on Instagram recently that was a time-lapse of me 
Yeah, yeah. Editing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like that is um, like there, that's so much fun to me. The state that you get in on like hour number 10 or hour 12. It's like the Tetris effect. Yeah, it's like playing Tetris all day or Factorio. Yeah. Factorio. <laughs> Because I worry about that, like what's, so you get like the podcast or whatever and you make money off of that, but then like. I mean, I'm not saying I want to yeah. become like Joe Rogan. I want to, I want to, I'm just saying that because like looking at Joe Rogan and looking at people who are a step or five steps or 10 steps down the ladder from him and seeing that they make more than enough uh, than you, you require to live or even to produce content that make more in a lot of cases make more than fucking celebrities right uh, not like kim kardashian but like people you've seen on tv are broke because they they're they're their well is dried up our well is growing every day and it's obviously going to continue growing you know what i mean um the one one thing that like rocked me and the thing that solidified this path in my head was when we we worked with we worked with a celebrity, um, not worked with, but we like talked to and hung out with. Uh, we didn't end up making anything with him, but um, he was like, uh, we were just talking about projects and he was like, yeah, my movie failed. I like don't know what I'm gonna do now. Um, and like putting it, putting it together, like the nuts and bolts of the business and like his world his mind, how he creates things, those people, people who you see on TV or people who you think that you want to be or people you think you want to like emulate their career, they don't have any fucking idea about anything other than like they doing stand up or like their manager telling them what to do. Like yeah. they're not like putting, putting together a podcast for a legacy media celebrity is like a guard. It's like, impossible amount of work. How are we going to put this podcast together? Oh, you need, we need someone to help us. We need to get help. Like, that's the first thing they think of is like who they're going to contact to help them make their, their vision a reality. Um, so I have, I have no doubt that fucking tech war is going to be a solidified way bigger. We're already huge. You're already, you already We're here with Sam Hyde. in an abandoned parking lot in front of well, not uh, abandoned. Building, this building 19. 19. This is my nest egg right here. This is where I have 19,000 Bitcoin miners. Because you've been posting, re uh, I mean, I only ask, because uh, you've been posting recently about like not tearing down, building up, constructing shit. Yeah. I mean, do you get like negativity it ever brings you down or? Oh, no, I'm sure. I mean, yeah, but that's not, that's not really, the thing that I see so much of is, um, People who are, their life is um, up in the air, sort of, or like they don't have a direction, or mm -hmm. they don't have a vision or something. Like it's, and I know this myself because I, I've been like this at points in my life, specifically when I was like in my early 20s, like being, um, having like poor me syndrome, mm -hmm. where you're like, I, I should be on MTV, I should be that guy, I need to be, I should be famous right now, this is fucked up, my art is so much better, why isn't my art the best? Like that, that type of mentality. Um, and I just, I hope to steer people away from that because it's a, it's a dead end. And there's like pleasure in, in uh, feeling battered or like when you're, when you're a victim, like it feels good to like stew in your own um, embitterment. Mm. And, and, uh, and especially if you're creating, like if you're making something, like if you're like, there's a lot uh, I, on Instagram, People, I get people follow me and their names have 666 in it. And then you click on it and it's like some fucking cutter, like with long hair, like long dark hair, who's like all dressed in black, er, in what, and not even dressed in black. It's not like gothic. It's like, it's like an ir ironic 666. And I just block these people right away. But there's there's definitely, like you know how some people are, are rageaholics? Like yeah. You can get addicted, you can get physically addicted to the, the sense of rage. And like it feels good to break shit and like be in that state like oh my god I'm gonna I'll fucking bust down the door if you say that again to me. Oh shit! Auto engine off feature. <laughs> um, I'm gonna if she says that one more time I'm gonna break down the door. But um, what I what I'm aiming to do is just to keep people steer people away from that <clears throat> because it's like a. 
it's not it's not even a dead end because if it was a dead end you could come back from it it's like uh to use my favorite star wars <laughs> universe analogy it's like the dark side of the force like there's no there's no coming back from when you um <clears throat> get too deep down that path and the other thing is like <clears throat> do, doing anything is so difficult like doing um even even putting together a podcast is like very difficult putting together a good one very difficult assembling guests difficult making making comedy making videos is pretty difficult and then when you add on top of that like you go up 10 orders of magnitude when you go from bitcoin to ethereum and then to chain link to where you're trying to do more than just be a value transfer protocol you're trying to be a world computer and then on top of that you're trying to be a decentralized oracle for inputs and outputs to major companies it's like the next step up from that is using it to make money and using it using something creative or using something like that to make money is fucking at least 10 times harder than doing it in the first place and it's like uh you to to you get kicked in the nuts so many times no matter what it is that you're doing if you're not if you're not a wage slave or if you're not like on welfare if you're actually out in the world trying to do something it's like an endless series of nut kicks and to in order to to bear that you have to have uh an an optimism that is a little gay mm. and a little bit uh woo woo like yoga like hey man just look at the bright side man like it's very like i realize i'm telling you to eat mushrooms right now um but i think that's like a requirement of like survival because i feel like people people can be very controlling even though like this is like your thing that's like this is my thing this is what like i'm doing this is what i want to do yeah and people can like do your readers is that what you feel about your followers some, like some of them like a, a minority of them yeah they're like very controlling it's like you got to do what's like right for the movement yeah you got to do like people trying to like lump you in with other people oh, yeah. make connections and say like yeah. he's part of this group and it's like I, I never believe that. I feel like you just gotta be like, yeah, yeah. You, you lead your own movement. No, I get that. Yeah, you like go your, you're your own mentor. Like you do your own fucking thing. Yeah. No, I get I get that all the time. You should you should collaborate with this person or you should be doing this. Why is he doing this? And I'm not saying that to like admonish like the people who follow me or whatever who feel that way. I'm just saying like, yeah. you'll be happier if you like do whatever you want. And there's, there's a, I mean, there's a, I think for the most part, the people that I've heard from, it's people who like genuinely want me to succeed. Yeah. And it's like, they're actually giving me their version of what they think the future should be. I get it. It's their advice, whatever. But like, um, it just, I just send a polite response. Like, yeah, I agree. I wish, I wish things could be like that. I wish we could be on TV. You're right. Being on TV would be smarter. Thank you for, thank you for